Hey, what's up guys? Today's video is gonna be about adding a office, bathroom, mezzanine, whatever, you know, adding a set of rooms inside an existing post frame. So this post frame that we're in, it's a 40 by 64 shop. I actually did a whole video series on this building. I'll go ahead and put it up here if I remember to put this tag right here. So check that out if you're interested in seeing this building you know, get constructed. We're gonna be adding an office, bathroom, and a small mezzanine. So this is only a 14 foot sidewall, which means if you're gonna do a full height lower level, like an eight foot ceiling in a 14 foot building, you're obviously not gonna have a ton of working space up on the second story, but it's just mainly for storage. So back here, we're gonna have a office area in the corner with the window. And then there's going to be a bathroom and a closet that's gonna house the you know utility stuff. So you can see the pipes that are coming out of the concrete, all that has already been done. And now we gotta take all the steel back off, install some headers, build the walls, put everything back together. So let's get into it. Oh yeah, and uh, stick around to the end of the video and I'll do a little walk around of this project in its entirety. If you're interested in seeing not just how this was built, but if you want to build something similar, I've got a set of plans out on my website. I'll put the link down below in the descriptions. And it's a very detailed set of plans that even if you want to build something like this, but slightly different, very easily modified, and you can take it to a local engineer if you need it stamped or go out and build it yourself. So let's go. Be careful up on that ladder. Safety third, man. The first glimpse, glimpse of what a wall looks like. My question is, how's there bird poop on that sheet? What? There's bird poop on that sheet. The sheet over there. Is there? Yeah. Drive-by? Yeah, drive-by. Make sure I'm on the wood there, my guy. All right, 10 foot. Okay, now go ahead and down there, dude, and I'm gonna mark my 20. All right. Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and snap these lines. Let's see where all these pipes lie. Just hold me on that line there. So that's 66 on the worst side, and then this one was the furthest on the other, which I think I saw six or 70, 70. So that's only four inches. It means we had an inch and a half total. So three quarters. So that means let's go 65 and a quarter. All right, let's snap that. Now, one thing is, if, if you didn't build the building, you should probably check it for square, but I'm assuming we're, we're pretty good. And to do that, all you're gonna do is pull your tape diagonally and check that they're equal. Let's just see how far we off we are. Kind of hard to read exactly, but 145 and a little over a half maybe, and 145 and a half. So yeah, I feel pretty good about that. All right, now let's get the laser out and let's check. I'll get the bottom plate and we'll get that you know, marked and whatnot. You know, since this uh, base trim is installed and the concrete is poured up against it, it's not as easy to take this off. So I'm just gonna use the multi-tool with a metal blade and this is all gonna get buried in the finishes. So you're not gonna see the cut, even though it'll be decent, it's not gonna be as nice as a nice clean snip. So put your hearing protection on. That's where the bottom wall plate will tie in. And this is a two by six wall because of all of our pipes here. Wow. Dude, not only that like didn't break my wrist. Yeah, it's the new XGT. Wow. 
One second. When I come through and set it on my bottom plate, it's gonna give me a number. So this is a zero. So that's a plus three sixteenths. And I'll just go through on each one of these stud locations and I'll mark the elevation change in the concrete. Because I can see that it's not flat. We've got drains that we're sloping towards and so we just know it's not flat. Wait, what am I doing? I didn't even worry about these because I'll actually frame these in when I get my ceiling framed in. So now that I've taken the uh, receiver, gone around and marked each stud location with the proper elevation, we can go ahead and cut all of these studs for the outside walls. This interior wall here will actually wait. We'll get the floor framed in, we'll get all, all that blocking done, and then I'll just use a laser distance measurer uh, to get a dimension from the bottom plate to the top plate ensuring that they're perfectly accurate. So uh, it just, I think it's just as easy or easier to do that because I've got to build this in place anyway because of this. So I think it's more accurate to, you know, cut them in and, and they're perfectly snug because the laser distance measure is within like a 30 second. Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. Mhm. This ain't engineered wood, man. We gotta actually have a line, otherwise it'll all be crappy. Yeah. Nails. You got nails. I hate forgetting stuff like that. want, I'll get these SDS, you start cutting 
those guys. Actually, don't cut them. Let's mount them, run them. Now let's just mount them, let's get them all screwed and mounted, and then we'll just run a snap line and just saw them. That way they're all perfectly straight. Now, Greg, do I need to tell everybody on YouTube that we're going to be putting hangers on here? I just don't have them, no, or should no, I? No, 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 don't tell them that. Okay. Only, we need them to freak out, and then they cause more interaction with the YouTube channel, which then increases. Okay. The push out to other people because of how much interaction it gets. Oh, okay. So we're actually hacking the algorithm. Exactly. By being hacked, by being hack carpenters, we're going to hack the algorithm. All right, so what we did was put those two by eight rafters up there or floor joists. It's just gonna be a little storage area for like your Christmas decorations and whatnot. And it helps define the space underneath. But we ran 12 footers and we cut our two end uh, floor joists to the exact dimension, snapped a line between them. I forgot to turn the camera on, but that's what we did. So all of these are a perfectly straight line or at least as good as my cut was. And now we're gonna run a piece of fascia board or a rim joist or whatever on it. And then we'll use that to come back and measure into our top plate. And you're probably wondering why don't you have a double top plate? I don't think it's necessary in this application because A, we're not putting a ton of weight on and B, all of our floor joists are directly over top of our studs. So we'll use the, the flat, perfectly straight fascia or rim joist to measure back to the wall, get it exact dimension, and then we'll fasten it all down. Go ahead and uh, straighten this out. So I'll probably need you to like push and pull. In a little. In a little. Yep. Okay, let's go. Uh, give me another tap. Okay, hold that. All right, at this point, we've got all the main framing done. We've got some one by material to put up, like you see here, to kind of go around and give us a place to nail our, our vertical siding. The thing is, we're gonna wait tonight. Our client's gonna make a choice because I kind of threw a curveball at him. This uh, galvanized steel and black wainscot steel was gonna go around the outside, but I thought, you know what? I've got some vertical siding, some LP smart side vertical left over from a job, and I thought this would be a great place to use it. So they're gonna look at it tonight. I brought some samples over, and then that will determine how we frame the rest of this. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. I gotta to pick up some joist hangers for the floor joist. Then we'll go ahead and install the subfloor, get that done, and we can start running the uh, steel back on this little area. So we'll be back tomorrow.